Greetings, my little anarchist. <clears throat> this is the great one himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. Pretty much just woke up, started on the coffee. Got to be off to work today. Got a big gig going down. Just want to throw out an anarchy moment. This will be going out on Friday. Today is March 25th, 2014. Because I'm going to have a full week, so I want to I want to load up the podcast ahead of time. While hitting one of the websites in the Manosphere, I saw a little link on the sidebar to... The link said, Stuff White People Like. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. So I clicked on that and found this website. It's StuffWhitePeopleLike.com. I've only read a few posts, but it's fucking hilarious. It hasn't been updated in a while, and it looks like it was created to support a book. Apparently there's a book. There's two books. Stuff White People Like and Whiter Shades of Pale. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this, this website is fucking hilarious. Read the post about white people standing still at concerts, because it's true. You go to concerts with white people, and they just fucking stand there. I've told this story before, but when I went to the... Back when I lived in H-Town, Houston, the Houston Stock Show and Rodeo, for however many days it ran, there's always a musical guest each night. And usually it was country music, you know, white people, whatever. Well, there's always one night to appease the non-Caucasians. And this particular year, it was Frankie Beverly and Mays. And of course, those of you who are white have no idea who the fuck Frankie Beverly and Mays is. And I really feel sorry for you. So, I go to the Astrodome to... I went to see the rodeo before the show, of course. And of course, the place is packed. It's about three-quarters white people. So the rodeo ends... None of these white people know who Frankie Beverly and Mays are, so they all leave. So there's the Astrodome. It's about 25% full. It's all black people, me, and about seven other white folks. The only eight white people in Houston who know who the fuck Frankie Beverly and Mays are. There was not a motherfucker in that Astrodome sitting down or standing still. We were jumping up and down and dancing and people were in the aisles and on the chairs and just going crazy and having a good old time. I go to concerts with white people and they just stand there like their mouth hangs open a little bit and they drool a little and they just stare at the band and they might sway side to side once in a while. They're almost held to like raise a hand in the air and go woo. Like God, fucking hell people. Oh my God. It's true. Like, it's true. And then also read the post on this website about Prius owners. <laughs> Prius owners. <laughs> Prius. <laughs> just, just saying the word Prius makes me fucking crack up. If there is anything in this world that is fucking just whiter than white, it's owning a Prius. You can't get any fucking whiter than that. You, I mean, you can't. I mean it. You, you fucking tell me one thing that is fucking whiter than owning a fucking Prius. One thing. There's nothing in the fucking cosmos whiter than owning a Prius. Anyway. The post I want to talk about that I thought was the most revealing is post number 134, the TED conference. Now this is, this is, and I don't know how serious, I mean, I think obviously this website is attempting to be somewhat humorous, but all great humor is based on truth. And humor set aside, I think this is absolutely the most accurate explanation of the popularity of TED events that I've, I've read. I may end up just reading 
almost all of this post to you, but let's do this. One of the easiest ways to create something that white people will like is to create something that will allow them to feel smart but doesn't require a large amount of work, time, or effort. Whoa! Who's been saying that for years? Google! People today, I'm the smartest generation ever. I have Google. They don't actually know anything. They simply type something into Google. Google gives them a, it, it returns a series of links. They click on the first link, they read it, they believe what it says. They believe they're smarter, but they've done virtually nothing. Yes, there it is. This is what the white people and, you know, I mean, who, again, who could be fucking whiter than the medicated generation? Who could be fucking whiter than the millennials? Who could be whiter than all of these fucking cocksuckers walking around with their fucking iPhone and their iPad? I mean, again, what... The only thing whiter than having an iPhone in one hand and an iPad in the other is if you're fucking leaning against your Prius while you're doing it. There is, however, I continue reading, there is, however, a catch. Whatever it is that you create cannot be a shortcut. You see, white people like the idea of getting smarter quickly, but they don't like the idea of people thinking they are lazy. In a bit of a paradox, it is a bit of a paradox, but it does explain this, I get this next statement. Think about this and tell me this is not the fucking truth. Ha the nail has been hit right on the head. Whoever wrote this has pegged the fucking nature of the under 30 generation. It does explain why white people only like cliff notes if they are part of some sort of hilarious college story about last minute studying for an exam and why they consider it highly unacceptable to use Cliff Notes or Wikipedia to get a rough understanding of a book you don't want to read. And this is the truth. People all the time, well, you used Wikipedia as your source. You don't actually know anything. Oh, but your source was a TED Talk that you watched on YouTube? Your source was you typed something into Google and believed the first link that came up. So your shit is accurate. You're a fucking expert. But because I used Wikipedia, I don't know what I'm talking about. And they will do this. The fucking medicated generation will give you shit for using Wikipedia. Yet, they go to TED Talks and think they're educated. And of course, TED Talks' little bastard brother, which I hate even more, is Ignite. Ignite, for those of you who don't know, Ignite is a thing. Ignite is like a poor man's TED Talk. I don't know how long the average TED Talk is, because, I mean, I've watched some. I don't really remember, but they tend to be kind of in the 10 minute ish range, is what my memory is telling me. See, I could do some quote unquote research. I could Google what is the length of a TED Talk and I could just believe the first thing that comes up. But I'm too fucking lazy to do that. And the difference here is I'm admitting I'm too lazy to do that because it's not that fucking important. It, it's kind of like, I mean, it, it, it's again, it's like, well, we're going to argue were there 6 million Jews in the concentration camps or 6.5 million Jews. Well, it doesn't really matter the exact fucking number. What matters is they shouldn't have been in the concentration camps. It doesn't really matter the exact length of a TED Talk. What matters is TED Talks are really fucking white. And they're an excuse for people to pretend they know stuff without actually having to work. And their little bastard brother, which is where I was going, is the Ignite. And Ignite, what that is, is your talk has to be only five minutes. And you have a series of slides behind you and your slides change every 20 seconds. So Ignite is like an even shorter version of TED for people whose attention span can't go over five minutes. 
and it's for shitty speakers who need to have slides behind them changing every 20 seconds in order to push their speech forward because they don't know how to fucking present their information and they don't know how to time their speaking skills because they have no speaking skills. And it's a way for all these people in the audience of Ignite to think they're smarter without having to actually do any work. And the code phrase for that today, the year 2014, is informed. Whenever somebody says to you, I'm informed on an issue, what this means is they watched a TED Talk on YouTube, or they heard an Ignite presentation, or they typed something into Google and then read the first link that came back and believed that it was true. Anytime somebody says to you, think about this, have you ever heard, have you ever heard a brain surgeon say to you, I'm informed about brain surgery? Well, no, because they're not informed about brain surgery. The guy does brain surgery for a living. He's done 50, 60, maybe 100, maybe 200 brain surgeries. The motherfucker knows what the fuck he's doing. He's not informed. He knows what the fuck he's doing. You ever heard, I don't know, a master carpenter tell you I'm informed about carpentry? No, because he's not informed. He knows what the fuck he's doing. He can build a goddamn cabinet and make the shit level and square. He can build a fucking house. He can use power tools. He knows what the fuck he's doing. Whenever somebody tells you they're informed about something, what they mean is, I have a very shallow understanding of this subject. However, I'm pretty convinced that my shallow understanding must be correct. A current example of that that's going around here in Fort Collins and, and other surrounding areas, because I ran into this a few years ago when I was in upstate New York, beautiful country, I've talked about it, is the whole fracking controversy. Again, just this is the short version. I worked in the fucking oil field, gas field industry for almost three years. I've been on more fucking rig sites than any of you have ever been on, especially since none of you have ever been on a rig site. And yet I have these cocksuckers coming. I'm informed about fracking. No, you're not. Well, actually, you are. And because by informed about fracking, what you mean is you read an article in the newspaper written by a fucking journalist who took a bunch of easy classes in college because he didn't want to take any math classes because math is hard and it's part of the patriarchy. And so this journalist is writing this hit piece on fracking companies because journalists hate corporations. And nobody involved in any of this knows jack shit about fracking. And then you read this newspaper article and now you're informed. And yes, you are informed about fracking. You have a very shallow, one-sided, idiotic opinion about fracking. You don't know your ass from a fucking hole in the ground, but yes, you are informed in the sense that that is what informed means. It means a shallow understanding. So see, white people love TED Talks and Ignite Talks because it allows them to become informed. They can go to these things and all they do is just sit there. It's like when they go to a concert, they just sit there motionless and listen to somebody talk about something for five minutes or maybe seven minutes or maybe 10 minutes and essentially just getting this Cliff Notes version. And then they think, oh, I'm so informed now. I know stuff, I've learned things. wrong. Let me go back to reading because this is, this is really funny. Unfortunately, being able to create something that makes you feel smarter without having to do a lot of work has been very difficult. So only a few ideas have ever gained attraction with white people, the most notable of which being documentary films and public radio. However, in the past decade, a new item has been added to this very short list, TED Talks. The TED Conference is an invite-only affair that brings together the smartest minds from around the world to share their knowledge and wisdom with the attendees. Additionally, all of the TED Talks are made available online in this podcast so that white people are able to watch or listen to them at work or during their commute. These talks are like college lectures, except they are free to listen, shorter, and white people aren't hung over and pretending to listen. <laughs> Having, having been to college, quote-unquote a real college, I can tell you that 
hungover and pretending to listen is exactly true. <clears throat> Due to the broad audience watching the talks, TED speakers generally take very complex ideas and boil them down into simple, engaging presentations. So when a white person finds out you have a PhD and visits and attempts to engage you in a conversation about string theory, you should know that all of their understanding comes from a 20-minute talk they listen to while running on a treadmill. You should also be aware that the average white person considers their knowledge on the subject to be par or superior to yours. And this is true. Again, all these people who are, I'm informed about fracking, these people actually believe that their knowledge about fracking is equal or superior to mine. I worked in this fucking industry for almost three years. You read a newspaper article and you believe that you know more about fracking than I do. This certainly has never come up in the field of philosophy because I get this all the fucking time. I have taken multiple philosophy classes. I was smart enough not to major in philosophy, but I have taken multiple, at least, I'd have to count, 15 philosophy classes. I've read a shit ton of philosophy books. I listen to philosophy podcasts. I watch philosophy videos on YouTube. I ran a philosophy discussion group. I've been doing a fucking podcast on philosophy for nine fucking years, and I will still have people come up and try to pretend that they know more about philosophy than I did because they heard Obama give a speech in which Obama said that people have a right to health care. When I asked them to define what a right is, they have no fucking clue, yet these people believe because they heard a speech, because they're white, because they're informed, they believe they know more about philosophy than I do. This is absolutely true. This is fucking white people 101 right here. All right. Anyway, this part is funny. Sadly, TED Talks are not all roses and NPR-approved comedians. For many white people, TED conferences are actually a source of sadness and depression. This comes from their dreams to attend a future TED conference in person. But with a price tag of $6,000 and an invite-only policy, Many white people are simply unable to attend. <laughs> and thus was the TEDx born. TEDx, for those of you who don't know, is TED events that are locally sponsored so that poor white people can attend TED events and pretend they're smarter than you. <laughs> anyway, I just, had to, I just had to talk about this and throw this out. Oh, because it's, it's really fucking funny. This website is really funny. And, like I said, this nails it. This is the TED Talk right here. This is white people wanting to be smart without doing any fucking work. This is why the medicated generation doesn't read books. You know, they want to be smart, but they don't want to do the fucking work. And, yeah, what else? I'm still, I'm still waking up. God damn, I got to get breakfast in go fucking work for a living today. That sucks. Send me bitcoins, assholes. I mean, send me bitcoins, my faithful listeners, and name coins, too. Yeah, that's it. As, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the rebound.